What is up guys? Um, it feels like it's been forever since I filmed and I apologize for that. If you're following along on this RV project, um, I haven't given up, I haven't quit. It's just a little stalled right now. The weather is cold here and you know, I have a lot of other stuff going on, creeping up on the holidays very soon, so there's that. And yeah, just a million excuses I come up with, but um, basically it's just slow going. So um, I wanted to check in with you today just to let you know that and to also um, show you what I have done and some of the little projects that I'm definitely going to get to uh, very soon. So I started building the couch for the RV. Um, the top part is an old futon. It looks pretty ratty right now, but it's just a little dirty, sawdusty. So it'll clean up nice. Um, but yes, built the base for it. I had a little help doing this. It's just a basic, you know, box construction. Nothing is attached yet. It would just kind of dry fit it for now, just to make sure it was, uh, going to work. Um, the next step in this project is going to be the seat belts. Um, I do want to reattach the seat belts so that passengers can legally and safely ride back here. I saved the original seat belts, which are here. Um, the problem is they are too short because I really don't want to put holes through the futon. So I'm going to have, you know, one coming up here along the side, then the two in the middle, and the other one coming up here. So they have to go from the floor to connect and back down to the floor. The seatbelts were originally bolted right here where that hole is which obviously is not at the right spot there is one back there perfectly in that corner so I'm gonna reuse that and and same with this side right there is uh, right there is that hole which also will be able to reuse that but I'm going to need to make two new holes in the center, pretty much where that seatbelt is hanging from right now, to attach the two center pieces. Um, there are compartments under this floor, so like down in them holes, I can access from underneath and from outside. So I can properly bolt the seatbelts to the floor. Once I have the seatbelts all sorted out, then this um, frame is actually going to be pushed back farther, up, tied up against the wall back there. And then I can attach the frame to the floor and also to the bottom of the futon, which is a wood frame. It's not metal in there, so you can easily screw into it. Once everything is in place and attached, then I'm going to clad the front and this side with plywood and I'm going to have two access doors um, for storage so it'll be perfect for storage. Then the couch will be done. I'll probably make some little like built-in side cabinet type deal there. Put a cup holder in it or something. I'm not quite sure. Um, oh, also, this is going to be stationary. It is not going to slide out into a bed. It was kind of a tough call, but it was much easier just to make it stationary. And some somebody can still sleep comfortably on here. One person or maybe even two small kids. It just won't fold down into the full-size bed or whatever it is normally. It's also something that can be changed down the road if I choose to or if I sell it and somebody else chooses to. 
it shouldn't be that big of a deal to just unbolt the frame and figure out some sort of sliding mechanism. The other thing I did, which is very, very minor, is I put my mattress in, which still needs trimmed. Um, that's going to be on the to-do list. What I did was bought two different types of foam. Now I got these online from a website called Foam Direct, I think. I'm not sure, but I'll I'll check on that and like no. Um, I've bought these types of foam from this company several times. They're super cheap. They're super fast in shipping. They do they do have a free shipping over, you know, spend a certain amount of money and get free shipping. So that's awesome. This is actually a full size mattress. <laughs> it's, um, you know, the measurements are the same as a full size bed. And I got two kinds of foam. This one is obviously a much softer foam. And this one is more dense. And it's it's pretty comfortable now I haven't slept out here but I have laid on it and sat on it and it's the same foam that I have in my house for my couch so yeah it's good stuff and together for both of these I want to say it was between 70 and a hundred dollars um, so yeah I try to find a mattress for that price especially an RV mattress I'm just going to trim some of the side off and probably some of the length just so it's easier to make the bed so I don't have to jam sheets down in between the wall. And also, as you can see, there's not much space here to walk. This has like an angled cut corner here. So I'm also going to chop the corner off. Uh, my furnace won't blow hot air. Um, tried it last year and didn't really look much into it. Tried it again this year. Still won't work. Um, the thing is, I have my, you know, gauges to tell me battery level and propane level and all that stuff. And it says it's full. It says my propane is completely full, which, you know, maybe that's a sign right there. So either my gauge is broken and it's actually empty or there's something wrong with it but when I purchased it when I purchased it I know these these things were tested we ran hot water it was like March so it was still pretty cold and they tested the heat and all that stuff worked so for the, for the you know two hour drive to get home between seeing the RV and getting home I magically ran out of propane, I guess. I don't know. So I went looking for the propane bottle thinking, well, maybe there's a valve or something that needs turned on. And it's like way up under the RV. It's not on the side with an easy, you know, access. There's a spot to fill. And then from that fill point, there's a hose that goes back under and up towards the front of the RV. Can't see the bottle at all, so I have no idea. Um, and I can't just hop in it and drive it somewhere to get it filled or topped off or anything because it's not inspected. Pennsylvania inspection, it's not insured. It doesn't have license plate, so yeah. Uh, from what I understand, I can get a little, you know, 20 pound propane bottle and hook it up, um, like bypass the, the onboard bottle and try that. So that is what I'm going to do. Um, worst case scenario, I can just bring out a little space heater. Today it's actually really nice, but you know, it's gonna be 30s and below very, very soon and nobody wants to work in that crap <laughs> so so those are some of the things I've done and the things that I am going to be doing over the winter like I said if you're following me on this journey thank you so much 
for watching me and um, don't worry I will be back even if there's long breaks between my RV videos there will be more so that about sums it up for this one thank you so much for watching don't forget to subscribe and like this video and I will see you guys in my next one